and welcome to the knitting tag. I'm gonna admit that I actually took the original knitting tag that was here on YouTube and combined it with two others that I found floating around on here, so there's a grand total of 39 questions that I have on this version. Feel free to adopt it yourself if you'd like to do it. Um, I combined it with the fiber arts tag and like one other knitting tag that was just under the same title but was slightly different questions, so... I felt like more questions, more fun, we'll just do the thing. For a lot of you here on this channel, you're probably just gonna skip this video because you don't do these type of crafts, but I mean, if you're just curious and want to learn about it from somebody who does, maybe because you have some interest in it, even if you don't partake personally, feel free to just listen in. But like I said, it may be boring for those of you who don't craft or knit or anything, so be forewarned. Anyway. Question number one is, do you do any other crafts? I find it interesting that the very first question here kind of like diverts off topic, but yes, I do. Both other fiber crafts as well as just other crafts in general. The other fiber crafts I do, um, I cross stitch, I do needlepoint, I do match hook, I crochet. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other that are fiber craft that I do currently. That may be it for those, but other crafts in general that I do, I do sequin art, I do mosaics, I paint, I draw, I dabble in photography, I'm not very good at it, but I dabble in it anyway. Um, oh, what else? I work with polymer clay from time to time. I'm not huge into that one, but from time to time I like to play with it. work with perler beads, I work with peyote stitch bead, work with seed beads. Um, I think what else what else do I do I'm looking around my room for um what else do I do that I am not thinking of right now because I know there's more crafts than that that I do um generally most crafts that are out there I've dabbled in at least a little bit <clears throat> excuse me so it depends to what extent it qualifies as a hobby those are my craftier ones I also play guitar piano and ukulele um, I make YouTube videos, I think we all know of that one. I'm trying to think, what other hobbies do I have? Um, well, I mean, I'm a big pop culture collector in general, so there's that. Um, what else? I'm kind of blanking right now, but I have a lot of nerdy hobbies. Oh, video games, I guess that qualifies too. Uh, I have a lot of geeky, nerdy hobbies, and I'm quite okay with that, so... Question number two. I have my computer next to me on the floor, by the way. Um, wait. Oh, I screwed it up. Question number one does, do you do any other crafts? So I guess the first part of my answer covered that. And any other hobbies is question number two. I also covered right there. So, oops. Uh, but question number three, then. Where do you knit? I'm trying to keep the cursor on the question I'm currently on. Um, pretty much wherever I happen to be at the time that I want to knit. A lot of times I may just sit on my bed and do it while either surfing the web or watching TV or anything. Uh, sometimes I'm downstairs at the dining room table with my computer doing the same exact thing. Sometimes I'm sitting on the sofa or on the floor watching TV while I do it. Um... Pretty much just wherever. I also have been known to knit in public, especially on public transit. Sometimes in the park, but I haven't done that one lately because there was a lady, locally, who would knit at the park and apparently wasn't all there and had a bad habit of trying to take off with children. And I don't want to be mistaken for her, especially since her physical description kind of sounds like me. So I was like, mm, nope, I'm not going there to do that anymore because I don't want people thinking I'm her. But Because um, in this area locally, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of knitters, so I don't want people to think that I'm trying to like steal children because I am not here for that. Um, I do not know the other woman, just I heard about her on next door and I'm like, oh, well, I guess that ends me knitting at the park then. But um, I knit at Starbucks sometimes. I knit not very often in the car because usually it makes me car sick if I try and do it in the car, which makes it weird that I can do it on fart trains, but I can't do it in the car. Not quite sure why that is. Um, but if I go to somebody's house, generally knitting comes with me since I have less social anxiety if I have something to do with my hands uh, while I'm out in public. So that's a thing. 
I think one time I even snuck my knitting into a movie theater, but I wouldn't recommend that one because it's so dark in there. You can't really see what you're doing. So unless you know your pattern by heart and can do it by feel without looking at it, don't bring it to a movie theater. But anyway, so number four, when do you knit? Morning, afternoon, evening, or anytime? Uh, anytime. <laughs> Pretty much whenever I have time to work on it. Uh, during the week, usually I have to do my data entry work first, just to get it out of the way. And I start that real freaking early in the morning. Like, we're talking like four or five in the morning. And that goes on till afternoon. I still have to get YouTube videos filmed, so usually, once that's all taken care of, then I knit. So, it's not set in stone, though. Uh, sometimes if there's not much work available, It'll happen earlier in the day, but otherwise, yeah, generally it happens later in the day, but on weekends, pretty much as soon as I wake up, it starts. So, there's that. Uh, number five, why did you start knitting? I always kind of wanted to anyway, since I was a little girl, since I was obsessed with, like, the Little House on the Prairie books, and basically all manner of old-timey crafts appealed to me because of those books. Um, especially, like, quilting. I went through a major quilting phase where I wanted to do that terribly. I settled for needlepoint instead, but, um, knitting was another one where I was just like, I so want to do that and I don't even know why, but I do. <laughs> and, um, I started actively trying to learn from a book when I was 16 because I wanted to make a Mike Nesmith hat, and lo and behold, I could not figure it out from that frickin' book. I managed to cast the stitches onto one needle, and given how convoluted their diagrams were, I was essentially just flicking the stitches from one needle to the other and back again. I was like, why is nothing happening? I don't understand what you do. And I kind of scrapped the idea for a good many years. I mean, I reconsulted the book a few times between point A and point B, and the same thing happened because I just did not comprehend it. I've even revisited that book since learning how to knit. And those diagrams are still confusing to me now. So that book was not a very good teacher. Um, but when I was about 25, I want to say, um, I had learned to cross stitch and I learned it through a YouTube tutorial. And it finally dawned on me one night, I wonder if I could learn to knit through YouTube. So I started looking up knitting tutorials and how to start, and I didn't even have the supplies anymore from back when I had that book and that kit. Uh, so truth be told, this sounds batshit crazy, but I took two pencils and some dental floss of all things on earth. Why those? I don't know, just because they were readily at hand. And I followed along the tutorial of how to cast on and somehow did the thing. And then followed along with how to do the garter stitch and was actually doing the thing. I mean, it didn't look very good. It was freaking dental floss. But I figured if I can at least figure out how to get that far just in technique, I will buy the supplies. I figured it out in one night. The very next morning, I went out, I bought some knitting needles, I bought some yarn, and I never looked back. <laughs> and every knitting technique I've ever learned has been learned through YouTube. Same with crochet. Actually, most of my crafts. That is how I learned. I'm a visual learner. I have to see somebody do the thing, but I have to see it in an angle where I can see how they are doing the thing. I have to see where the needle is going into each stitch, what the gesture is. Once I see that, once it clicks in my brain, how to follow through, I got it. So that for me works best. I know other people who do better with diagrams. I know people who do better with it written out in text. I mean, to each their own. But for me personally, that's how I learned. But why I learned was because I wanted a Mike Nesmith hat so freaking badly. And it seemed like nobody online was selling them at that point, and it pissed me off. So I was like, well, I will learn to make one my goddamn self. And I did. And then I started selling them because I posted pictures of how good it turned out online. People were like, oh my god, make me one. I was like, I'll sell you one. And they were like, okay. So they started buying them from me. I didn't even have an Etsy yet. They were just paying me through PayPal directly. And I got so many requests for these damn things, and just one by one, after about like 
the first 50 or so of them, I was like, I'm gonna open an Etsy shop for this. And seven years later, I am still making and selling those, but obviously I have branched out into many, many other things that I sell as well since then. But that was the original reason I learned, because I wanted a Mike Nesmith hat so badly, and I knew other people wanted them just as badly as I did. And there is still a demand this long after the fact. And everybody seems to agree that I am the best person at making them and selling them. So it's kind of a thing. Okay, number six. How did you, or how do you get ideas or inspiration for your projects? Oh, all over the place. Sometimes it's like a pop culture thing like the Mike Nesmith hat was, and then I go seeking out how to make said thing. But a lot of times I'm just like trawling around online, on Ravelry, on allfreeknittingpatterns.com, or just any of those sites like that. Sometimes Instagram, sometimes Pinterest. And I see a design that I just fall in love with and I try my hand at it and either it turns out or it doesn't. Uh, usually the ones that don't are the ones involving color work, but the ones that are not involving that, usually nine times out of ten I can figure out and can do and I'm quite proud of it. Whether or not I just make it for me or if I make it for others, it varies, but um, let me scooch this down a little. But um, come on, tripod. But regardless, um, generally these days, I think most of my patterns at this point come from Pinterest or from Ravelry, but I do find inspiration all over the place. Number seven, how do you store or keep your patterns? Oh, that one's an easy one for me. That is pretty much straight up Ravelry for like 90% of them, except for ones I've either purchased or I've downloaded manually to my computer. I have a folder on my computer for those. Number eight, name three of your favorite projects. Hmm. Oh, wait, that's the crocheted. Okay, I was gonna say the star blankets, but that's not knitted. Okay, knitted ones specifically. Well, obviously the Nesmith hats. I still love them, even though there's still so much demand for them. I'm literally always making them. I do enjoy it because it's so mindless for me at this point. I can crank those puppies out while watching TV. It's great. Um, there's that. Um... I love making those little twisted knit headbands. They're so simple, but they're so cute, and everyone seems to love them. Uh, so there's those, and, hmm, third favorite. Probably infinity scarves. Even though the ones I've listed on my Etsy are crocheted, I make knitted ones for people I know like, in real life. So, I mean, you may not have seen them yet, but I do make them. So, uh, number nine. Do you knit according to the season? Oh, hell no. <laughs> I knit whatever, whenever I feel like. Pretty much a wild hair gets up my ass, and I'm like, well, it's July. I'm gonna make a Santa hat today, because I don't know why, but I feel like it, so I'm doing the thing. Or it'll be, like, dead of winter, and I'll be making summer knits. A lot of times it seems to be the 100% opposite of whatever season it actively is, is what I'm making, because I wish it were the other season at that point in time. Um, but sometimes they're season appropriate, but usually not. <laughs> Number 10. How old were you when you started to knit and who taught you? Um, I already answered that. I was 25 and YouTube taught me. Number 11. What is your favorite pattern at the moment? Ooh. Mm-mm-mm. Favorite pattern at the moment. Darn it, my brain keeps going to crochet patterns, and that's not what we're here for today. Um, favorite one at the moment. Probably... Mm, do I remember the name of it offhand? I don't, but it's basically that, like, feather fan and lace baby blanket that... It's like got open work lace in it, but it's also ripples. I've done a few of those at this point. Um, I modified it to where I don't have to make it in panels anymore. It's all one piece. So that 
made me enjoy it. Before that, I hated that pattern, but now that I don't have to stitch together panels, I love that pattern, and it just comes out looking so nicely, and it looks so much fancier than it actually is, so, you know, that's always a nice thing. Um, number 12, when was the last time you knitted? About 20 minutes ago, because <laughs> I'm working on Etsy orders. Uh, number 13, do you listen to knitting podcasts? Um, not regularly. If I'm really bored, I will go seeking them out, but usually it doesn't occur to me to go looking for them, or even ones I've listened to in the past, I don't necessarily remember to go check back on and see if there's new episodes of, because I don't use any of the apps that automatically download new episodes of podcasts. I just have to go manually to whatever website they're hosted on and listen to them that way because I'm lame. I know there would be easy solutions for this, but it's one of those things where I kind of don't care enough to go out of my way for it, so I don't. Number 14. Are you on Ravelry? Yes, I am. And I think my screen name on there is just Jenny OneNote. Number 15. Do you knit gifts for people? Not as much as I used to. I used to knit gifts for everybody, and then I found out just how few of them truly appreciated said gifts, and after spending that many hours making those gifts on them, to find out that they, like, never used the thing or never wore the thing, yeah, it left me pretty deflated, so now I am super picky about who I will knit gifts for. It has to be people who will actually appreciate them and actually use the thing and have it be a thing that they do actively want. So, but, um, but in the case of baby blankets, so... Those I still make as gifts, because everybody loves baby blankets, just saying. Uh, number 16, do people ever make fun of your knitting? At this point, not anymore, but when I very first started doing it, everybody was making fun of me for being an old lady, and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm so fucking old at 25, right? But, um, I think everyone got it out of their system really quickly, and then they saw that I was actually having a good deal of success with Etsy, and they kind of shut the hell up. So <laughs> there's that, and when they saw that I was serious about this, and I wasn't going to cave to them making fun of me over it, and was going to keep doing it, yeah, they shut up. So, I mean, it's very rare that people make fun of me for it anymore, but when they do, I'm kind of just like, yeah, you go ahead and laugh. Meanwhile, I'll be laughing my way to the bank with the money that I earn off of this hobby, so... Anyway, so... <laughs> Apologies to my younger viewers. So, um, question number 17. What was the last skein of yarn you bought? Um, they were bought at the same time, so just go back to my last Joanne's haul, and I'm sure something in there was technically the last one, but I, like I said, there was a bunch of them bought the same day, so technically anything from that haul. Number 18, what are your favorite needles to use? Um, I am so not fancy with the needles that I use. I know there's people that spend crazy amounts on those, like, beautiful Knitter's Pride ones. And while I would love to own a set of those, they're just too expensive for me to justify that kind of a purchase on knitting needles. Especially when I can get needles that do the same exact thing for a lot cheaper. It's like, maybe one day... Today is not that day. But I generally just use plain Jane Susan Bates aluminum needles. Um, they do the job well enough. I mean, yeah, the color wears off them, but I really don't care. As long as they don't break, I don't care. I've had like one pair of them break, and that was because of my own dumbass self. Because I was trying to unclog a vacuum cleaner with one of them. It was my own fault that it bent. Under normal circumstances, I have not had any of those break. I had a circular needle break, but it wasn't the needle, it was the cord that broke. But, um, so most of the time for straight needles, that's what I use. For, um, double pointed needles, I think my favorites, probably the Lion brand double pointed needles like they're plastic coated but I think they're like bamboo inside of them I've never had a problem with those and the plastic is a little bit grippy so it helps them the needles not slide out of your work while you work on them although I do have a smaller set that's um that are made of metal 
that were from Knit Picks. And it's got like the really itty bitty sizes that I imagine are probably for things like sock knitting, but I've still never made a sock. But um, I, I have the needles to do it, should I ever do that. I've used them for things like gloves though, so I mean, it's not like the needles have never been used, I just haven't used them for what most people would use them for. Now those needles are a lot heavier, and because they're also made of metal, I do have issues with them sliding out of the work, and it's kind of an uphill battle with them, but at the same time, if you use anything other than metal in that itty bitty of sizes, I don't know about you, but I have not had a good track record. I tried using bamboo and those little suckers bent and snapped in less than 24 hours. Cause apparently I'm speed racer when it comes to knitting. I grip my needles way too hard probably. And I put too much pressure on them. So things like bamboo do not end well for me. Um, so those don't work. And in that skinny of a size, plastic honestly doesn't end well for me either. So aluminum was kind of the only option. But with those, I think those are actually steel because of how heavy they are. I'd have to look at the package again, but I think they're steel. But um, but generally for my double pointed needles, I stick with the Lion brand ones for more typical sizes. Um, let me think. For circulars, I think my favorites are the Susan Bates Quicksilver line um, because they're still metal on the inside, but they're coated in ceramic and the yarn just glides right over them and it is a lovely experience. Yeah, they're a little bit heftier. They feel substantial to work with, uh, but the results are just so nice. Um, my Nez hats are always made on those. I've kind of worn down the tips on them a little bit, but they still do the job, so I'm good. But, um, but yeah, I really like those a lot. Actually, out of all knitting needles I own, those, that's probably my favorites are those, so. Okay, let's see. Number 19. How big is your stash? <laughs> you can see part of it over here and part of it over here and that's like not even like a fourth of it yeah it's crazy how much mustache is i cleared out two shelves in my closet so far they are jam packed to the gills already i'm working on clearing out another shelf I'm sure it will be filled within five minutes, just like the others were. Um, so there's those shelves, there's this hamper, there's that wire mesh cube unit thing over there, there's a crap ton of yarn in front of it that I am just too embarrassed to show anybody because honestly it looks like Hoarder City because of it just being in piles on the floor. There is one, two, three hampers at the foot of my bed all filled with um, Karen Simply Soft, there is a storage ottoman in front of that that's filled with Bernat Satin, in front of my TV is one of those like plastic kid cubby hole thingies with crap tons of Vanna's Choice in it and my Nez Hat yarn is over there too, um, behind that is a cardboard box filled with, um, oh what is it, the sheepish yarn, it's Debbie somebody I want to say Norville, but I don't feel like that's correct, but it's the sheepish yarn. Um, so there's a bunch of that in that box. Once that runs out, that line's been discontinued, so once it's gone, it's gone. So that won't be coming back once I use it all up. Uh, behind that, there's a box with Lion Brand Hometown USA, I think it is. Um, next to that is, like three boxes plus a hamper of cotton yarns. Yeah, that and the worst part is that I still constantly buy more yarn because I never have enough because I have problems. But I'm also running a business. So I mean, it's not like it doesn't get used. Just I have to have the colors on hand at a moment's notice so I can fill the orders as they come in because I make my items to order. I make like one, I sell the one, but then I have the image of the one. So as soon as somebody else wants it, I just have to get my butt on it and make another one of it and remember how I did it. But um, yeah, there's that. And because of that, there's very low wait times for my stuff and people like that, and that's why it does well. But that also means that my bedroom looks like a yarn store, which I don't mind, but other people are slightly disturbed by, so that's a thing. Number 20, how many works in progress do you have? <laughs> Way too many. Um, 
Let's see. I know I have a written list somewhere, but it's not even updated anymore. I'm trying to exclude crocheted projects in my head from this and just think of knitting ones. I have a cable knit scarf that I'm attempting to design that I have been trying to design for a really long time and I keep screwing it up and undoing it and restarting it and... I am not the world's greatest pattern creator, just let it be known, so if this pattern ever gets listed it's gonna be a friggin' miracle. So there's that. There is the Nez hat that I have on my needles right now that I'm making to order and then three more after that that have to be made. There is a baby blanket that is over halfway done that I need to get done and in the mail because my friend is like a month away from popping out that kid. Um, Let's see, what other knitting projects? I have a sweater that I never finished. Um, there is a lot of stuff that is not finished that I am blanking on. There is at least two headbands that I have not finished. They're sitting on the foot of my bed. Uh, there is what else? many, many, many hats. There is, um, what else, what else? I'm blanking, but just rest assured, there are many unfinished projects, but as many of the knitting ones as there are, there is like five times as many crochet ones, so. Okay, number 21, colors or neutrals? All of the above. <laughs> I like working with literally all of the colors, just it depends on my mood at any given time and what the project is for what I will use for it, but those of you who know me know I had door colors, but at the same time I know neutrals sell better, so I always have this inner clash with myself over knowing that I can do the bright crazy colors that would make my heart happy. But if I want to make a profit, I also gotta do the neutrals, because those are the wearable ones. <laughs> so there's that. Number 22, sweaters or socks? Sweaters, because at least I've completed one of those, and I've got three-fourths of the way through a second one. Yeah, projects that big are not my forte because I get ADD partway through and then they sit in a box for like five years and then I come back to it and it's like, oh yeah, I should finish that. I put on like 20 pounds since I started that, so I'm probably gonna have to redo a lot of it so it'll fit, but I mean... Um, I have never done a pair of socks. One of my friends is a pattern creator. She even donated me a pattern for a very basic pair of socks, and I've still not done it. I don't know why I'm so freaking scared to try sock knitting, but I am. It's stupid how scared I am of it, but um, I don't know why I am either is the worst part. It's kind of like cable knitting. I was so terrified of it for the longest time, and then when I finally just tried it one day, I was like, I was scared of this for nothing. This is actually really easy. I feel really dumb now. I could have been making cable mitts all along. Apparently it's so simple. It's just a matter of you have one extra needle and you hold it to the front or the back for X number of stitches and then you continue about your merry way like you would have already been doing anyhow. And it makes a cable. It's so stupid how easy that is. So I am sure that sock knitting, for as popular as it is, has to be something like that where Everyone's scared of jumping in in the first place, but as soon as you do, it's like, oh, that's actually really easy. Why was I scared of that? <laughs> One of these days I'll have to do it, but today is not that day. Number 23, how long have you been a knitter? How many times have we gone over this since I was 25? So I'm 33 now. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, so, ooh, eight years. <laughs> One year longer than I've had my Etsy. Yeah, that, that actually sounds correct, so. Damn, I'm coming up on a decade of knitting. I have done nothing with my life for like the past decade <laughs> other than knit. Oh, I am pathetic, okay. But we knew that, that's no shocker. Number 24, have you ever spun yarn? No, I have not. I am a weird enough person without adding that to the mix. I'll have a new nickname of Rumpelstiltskin. I am positive of it if I ever start that, and I'd just rather not invite that trouble. You know, just a thought. Um, number 25, have you ever dyed yarn? Once. Once and only once. 
and it looked like a crime scene afterwards because I didn't take necessary precautions to avoid staining. And I used red. It looked like blood all over everything that got stained, including my hands, because I'm a genius. I never dyed yarn again after that day, so I don't know if I'm ever going to get brave enough to try it again after how disastrous that was. Number 26. Have you ever been to a knitting event? No, I would love to go to one. I have currently not been to one. I have never even been to, like, a local knitting group. There was one that started, like, back in February. Their first meeting was on Valentine's Day. And Valentine's Day also happens to be my YouTube anniversary, and I kind of used that as my excuse to not go, which is really lame of me, and I should have just gone. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why I didn't go. I have kicked myself ever since. Um, I don't even know if it's still going at this point, because there wasn't a lot of interest on the post that I saw about it to begin with, so... Yeah, I screwed myself over on that one. It kind of sucks, but that's being an agoraphobe for you. Um, but things like big events, I don't think we even have them locally either here. I think the closest they ever come is San Francisco, which is still like an hour away. Um, so yeah, it's just never happened. It'd be nice if it did one day, but so far it hasn't. I haven't even taken part in a craft fair yet. Mostly because I don't have a smartphone and therefore I can't take card payments. And I have been told on good authority from my friends who do them all the time. Yeah, at this point in time you need that if you're going to do craft fairs. Because otherwise you're going to miss out on like three-fourths of your sales. So, not worth it to throw that money down if I'm not even going to earn it back. So, number 27. What is your local yarn store? We used to have a really nice one, super locally, but it shut down. So the closest to here now probably is just Joanne Fabrics, which is not much of a yarn store. It's a craft store, but I mean, they happen to carry yarn, and you all know that I'm cheap, so a lot of my yarn comes from there, both online and locally. But um, that, I think, is the current closest place that sells yarn now, because our local one that had been, like, strictly an actual yarn store closed before I ever started knitting, and it makes me really sad. I actually applied for a job there once, and they weren't hiring, so that kind of sucks. Well, I tried to apply for a job, I should say. I didn't get as far as an application because they weren't hiring, but I called and inquired about applying, so... And then the next thing I knew, like, a few months later, they were gone. So that would probably be why they weren't hiring. Um, do you ever buy yarn online? Dude, most of the time I buy my yarn online. <laughs> I don't drive, so for me, it's easier to buy things online. Just have it sent to my doorstep. Um, basically, unless there's extenuating circumstances, like I got a rush order and Joanne's happens to have what I need on hand that day in stock, I can't talk anybody into bringing me to go there to get stuff, so yeah, most of my yarn purchases happen online. Not always from Joann's, though. Sometimes I buy from Webs, sometimes I buy from Knit Picks, sometimes I buy from Lion ba Brand or um, from Yarnspirations or from Red Heart directly, but usually it's Joann's. Like, let's be real. Number 29. Which finish off do you use all the time? I think just like the standard bind off usually. <laughs> um, I know that there is the, um, I think it even has my name in the title, not because of me, just coincidence that I have a very common name, but it's like the Jenny's Super Extra Stretchy Bind Off. I like using that one a lot too, because for some reason when I bind off, it just comes out way too tight and it bunches up a little bit. So if I use that one, it comes out something approximating normal. So I use that one a lot. Um, number 30, do you multitask when you knit? Yes. Yes. Unless it is a complicated thing where I have to focus on it. And generally, I'm so ADD, I just don't pick projects that require that of me. Um, yeah, I'm almost always watching or listening to something while I knit. Or I'm talking to somebody while I knit. So, Number 31. Favorite compliment about your knitting? Hmm... Probably, well, there's two. One was fairly recent and was an Etsy feedback that I got that I 
actually cried over and I screen capped and I posted it to my social media because I was so touched. But it was somebody who bought a Nez hat and they left a comment that read basically that it was so spot on accurate that they were convinced that this was legit the hat from the show. They saw why Mike never took it off. They hadn't taken it off in like two weeks. I'm just like, I'm so touched. Or all the people on that same item who said that they'd wanted one since they were a child in the 60s and now their dream has finally been realized and I was able to make that happen for them. And those I just always get choked up over. But the other one was for one of the baby blankets I did for one of my sister's kids and it was that open lace work blanket that I did. She said that she gets, or at least at that point when that kid was still a baby, he's like four or five now, but um that she was always getting compliments on that, and people asking where she got it, and apparently she was like, if you wouldn't mind making that again, I have, like, a row of at least a dozen people who want to buy one from you. It's like, aww. <laughs> so that was pretty nice. Number 32, what is your favorite stitch marker? Depends. Are we talking favorite just aesthetically in design? Or are we talking favorite in terms of the ones that I use the most often? Because this is a very different answer. If we're talking aesthetically, it's gonna be my Beatles ones. Oh yes, I have Beatles stitch markers that I bought from somebody on Etsy. They made little polymer clay charms on stitch markers that look like the Sgt. Pepper jackets and the drum logo and the green apple logo and just... Yeah, I have a set of them. There's a few others in there too, but I just, I had to. As a Beatle fan, I had to. But I'm always scared because they're clay. I don't want them to break, so I'm always very, very hesitant to use them. But aesthetically, they are my favorite, hands down by far. I am also a big fan, similarly on that same note, of um, they're just little ring stitch markers with gems on them but they're called Ringo's. By the way, it's Ringo Star's birthday today, so... <laughs> Anyways, um, so for that, I obviously love those two. But as for the ones I use the most, often like actually use all the time, I am so freaking basic, but the little locking stitch markers that look like little safety pins, yeah, those, like, 99% of the time that is what I use, because they just, they're the most convenient, they don't slip out of place. They don't, I've never had one break. I mean, I've heard of people buying like knockoff El Cheapo ones that have broken. Yeah, no, I bought mine from uh, Nitpicks, so I probably overpaid, but at the same time, I've never had them break, so I'm not complaining. Um, and I bought a few packs of those, so I'd have enough to go around. So those are the ones I like actually use the most, and for that, are probably the true answer for favorite because it's my go-to, even though I've got a bunch of different types of them. But those are my favorite. Let's see, number 33, we're almost done. Have you ever taught someone to knit? I have attempted to teach people to knit. I don't think I really succeeded in my efforts, both because they were impatient people who are almost as impatient as I am. So if I didn't get frustrated and bail, they got frustrated and bailed. So, I mean, I don't think I've ever actually successfully taught someone to knit. And I feel really bad because my nephew desperately wanted me to teach him to knit and I just never found the time to do it. And now he lives in another state. So the odds of me being able to teach him to knit are basically close to none. And by the time I would actually get out there to do the thing, he he's probably already old enough to have outgrown wanting to, because he was like seven when he was asking me. He's ten now. Uh, so there's that, but um, yeah, I've never successfully taught anybody to knit. I barely taught anybody to crochet, so there's that. Number 34, what is your worst knitting habit? Probably that I always bind off way too tight, or that I start a million projects, put them down, get craft ADD, and start like 10 million more that also end up unfinished. Probably that. <laughs> oh gosh, number 35. What are your favorite types of yarn? 
Um, I'm a big fan of Barocco Vintage Chunky, even though it's expensive, but it's really nice. Um, I obviously love my Vanna's Choice, even though it's basic as hell. It works for everything, so I mean, I can't complain with that. I like Karen Simply Soft a lot, even if it technically has some issues in how it's manufactured and there's often knots in it. I work around those. Um, it kind of makes up for, it seems like Bernat Satin is kind of going under, so it's very similar to it, so I like it. It's just thinner, so it takes multiple strands to approximate to what Bernat Satin was. Um, obviously, I'm a big fan of the Karen One Pounds that I have freaking everywhere. A more recent love has been the Premier Sweet Rolls. Um... I wouldn't necessarily say Red Heart's a favorite, it's just a staple that I always have on hand for things that are aesthetic that don't have to be worn, therefore the scratchiness doesn't matter. Um, ow, I hit myself. <laughs> I'm holding a hairbrush and I don't know why, <laughs> but um, ADD. But um, what else, what else? Um, that Sheepish Yarn was a favorite, but it's been discontinued. Lily Sugar and Cream is probably the favorite for cotton yarns, even though there's others that I interchange with it for specific colors sometimes, but that is the one that I always go back to. Um, there's lots of stuff I use. The higher end stuff, there was, um, oh, what brand did it? I think it might have been Rainbow Palace that had Mini Mochi. I really enjoyed working with that. It's just really expensive, so I can't usually justify it, but I've worked with it twice and I really, really liked it, both the colorways and just how soft it is and just, it was a lovely experience, but it's just really pricey. Um, those are probably my current faves. I know yarn snobs are gonna watch this and be like, oh honey, no, no, you cheap bitch, no, but you gotta live within your means and I can't afford the more expensive stuff, so. Number 35. Which knitting techniques do you love and which do you loathe? I love cables. I love knitting in the round. Um, those are probably favorite knitting techniques. I'm trying to think of anything else. As for loathe, you already heard that I loathe binding off because I always screw it up. Um, but my Achilles heel with knitting, believe it or not, is color work. And I don't know why my brain can't comprehend how to do the thing. So many people have tried to show me how to do the thing. I can do stripes, but actual color work for like intarsia or anything, or fair isle knitting or anything like that, I always butcher it and I don't know why. It either has big gaping holes in it or it bunches up one or the other. Every time I cannot do the thing correctly and it pisses me off and makes me very butt hurt because it's the thing I wish I could do the most badly. <laughs> Number 37, what is your biggest knitting disaster? Oh, it, this ties back in with what I just said. Uh, those of you who follow my social media accounts probably remember four or five years ago I tried to make a Liza Minnelli blanket, a graph gam. I ended up crocheting it because I tried to knit it first, and it was like my second ever knitting project, because I decided I'm just gonna jump in, both barrels blazing, it's gonna be great, I never do shit the easy way, like with cross-stitching, I, I could have started with something basic. No, I started with something that was photographic quality and spent three months of my life on that, uh, so I figured with knitting it'd be exactly the same thing, where I'd just bypass anything simple and just go straight to complex shit and just blow people away. Didn't pan out for me how I hoped. <laughs> um, it, it kept having that exact problem of bunching up or having big gaping holes in it, and nothing I did managed to fix it. So I bailed, and I learned to crochet just so I could still make this blanket. That was the whole reason I learned to crochet, was so I could do that. And then I never finished the damn thing because my dog barfed on it, and because it was uncompleted, there was like loose ends all over the place. I knew if I put it in the washing machine, it would unravel, but at the same time, it had dog puke on it, so I didn't really want to handle it to finish. So it's just taking up residence on a corner of my floor five years later. Five or six years later, I should say, but yeah, that. 
that. Damn it. <laughs> I really wanted to finish it too. I probably still have the pattern somewhere. I honestly should scrap it and start over, but oh, that was a lot of time and money poured into that. Like, I probably dumped at least 20 skeins of yarn into that sucker and got about three-fourths of the way done just for that to happen. <laughs> it hurts my heart. Um, but yeah, the original knitted version was probably the biggest disaster because not only could I not figure out the color work, but for all the multiple balls of yarn I had going at the same time to try and do the thing, it made this big knotted mess that I was not unable to unravel. I had to just throw it all away. Because I couldn't get it undone from itself. It was so bad. It was so bad. And it was probably like at least seven or eight skeins that got dumped. Because I was an idiot who didn't stop. When I first started having a problem, I decided to keep going, thinking maybe it'll magically sort itself out. Early knitter problems, because like I said, that was my second project ever, and I decided, let's just go in that hard. Yeah, and this many years later, I still don't know how to do color work, and I've tried so many times to figure it out. It's like the missing link in my brain that just doesn't connect. I don't know why, and so many people, I, even in knitting groups on Facebook, I have asked about this, what is the secret, and people have tried to explain it to me, and I still F it up, and I don't know why, but I hate myself that I can't do it. Ah, oh, 38, if you could meet anyone in the knitting community, who would, who would it be? Probably Diane Service from Pixie Locks on Etsy because she is kind of like my Etsy hero that I look up to ridiculously much and at points where I was ready to tap out and just bail on Etsy and just quit, I would look at her shop and how many sales she's made and how many things she's made and be like, no, I gotta keep going. If she can do it, I can do it. Maybe not as well as her, but I mean, she hasn't been on the site that much longer than me. And damn, she has like almost 40,000 sales. Like, no joke. And I'm like, she is my freaking knitting hero. No joke. And she is so sweet and just, I would love to be able to just hang out with her for a day. And also Twinkie Chan, which is so cliche, but I don't care. And the worst part is she's local. She's in San Francisco. This could so easily happen. See, Diane is on the East Coast, but Twinkie Chan is just like an hour away. Why has this not happened? Probably because I'm not even a blip on her radar, but I mean... Actually, actually, let me see how many sales she currently has, because I feel like... I may be about a fifth of the way to where she is now. Let's see. Twinkie Chan. I have her book for what it's worth. Let's see. I think. It's loading. <laughs> or trying to, anyway. Stand by. Yeah, she has about 6,000 sales currently. I have like 1,000. So I have, I have about a sixth of what she has. So, like I said, I'm probably not even a blip on her radar, but holy hell, she has inspired me in so many crazy ways she doesn't even know. <laughs> and she lives so close by, and yet I feel like our paths will never cross, and it hurts my heart that that's probably the reality of it, but it doesn't stop me from wishing that I could meet her and hang out with her for a day, but... Anyway, I just love how kawaii her designs are. They're so freaking cute. Okay, so minimize that back out. Go back to where the questions are because we are almost done. Yep, last question, number 39. What is your ultimate knitting goal? To figure out the secret to color work. I know, I know, we've talked about it to death, but... It just, it bothers me so much that something that everyone else can do so easily just makes no sense in my head. I want to do it so bad. Oh my god, the things I would make if I could just figure out how to do the thing. So, I mean, it'd be great to figure that out. 
it would also be great to learn how to do socks. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm so basic. And these should be attainable goals, and yet... Although, okay, other knitting goal. To be able to really figure out how to make knitting patterns that don't suck. I think I've made, like, three patterns to my name so far. I really suck at it. <laughs> and it seems like every idea I have has already been done by somebody and it pisses me off. And I'm just like, what original ideas are still out there that I can make? There has to be something. There has to be something. <sighs> it's just a matter of figuring it out. <laughs> so, I mean, that would be great to become, like, an established pattern designer. But, anyway. So that was the knitting tag an hour later uh, with 39 whole questions. I'm going to try to copy paste them into the description of this video. It may be too long. It might not accept them. So if that's the case, then you're going to have to go through this video to get all the questions. But sorry about that. But I'm going to try. I'm going to try to put them down below. So if they're not there, that's why. But anyways. You guys know what to do. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you're not already and you'd like to be, click subscribe. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Leave comments down below. If you did or are planning on doing this tag, let me know so I can watch your answers. If you feel like, or if you don't do videos but you just watch videos, you could answer with your answers down in the comments. Anything at all that you feel like leaving me is always welcomed. Uh, if you want to follow my social media accounts, they're all listed down below. And if you like what I do here on this channel and like to help support its donation link, as always, is down in the description. Unless there's not room with all the questions, in which case, visit any of my other videos. It's got all that info. So, anyway, guys, till next time. Bye-bye.